the total saturated and alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde concentrations. So we're talking about toxic aldehydes um, that are being generated by the frying of these fats. Okay, so this is um, just a, a clearer version of same, and I'm about to tell you what um, uh, a little bit more. So figure one, the title is generation of cytotoxic and genotoxic. So that's cell killing and gene destroying aldehydic, those are aldehydes, it's a particular kind of toxic molecule, lipid oxidation products, that's just like all of the oxidation products that are generated in culinary frying oils, corn oil, sunflower oil, coconut oil, and butter were the four that they chose, subjected to laboratory simulated shallow frying episodes. So <laughs> that seems that seems very like a lot of very fancy talk, um, but Basically, they started at time zero on the x-axis and go only through 100 minutes, which is a lot less time than you're going to get in, say, a fryer um, that is being used for a week solid before you throw out the, the fat. Yeah, this is the equivalent. They are testing effectively pan frying over a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, short, 100, 100 minutes isn't that short. Well, but um, compared but, to a week. Yep. Um, and uh, and on, on the y-axis... Uh, you have these measures of toxicity. So I'm not again. I'm not going to go into the chemistry of exactly what those those measures are. But there's there's these forms of aldehyde, and you can see just right off right off the bat that corn oil and sunflower oil uh, have much higher rates of the production of these cytotoxic and genotoxic aldehydic lipid oxidation products uh, than do coconut oil or butter. And it's even worse than you think because check out the y-axis on these things and coconut oil and butter have y-axis that are twice that are half as short and so they actually had to extend the y-axis on the on the high saturated fat fats in order to get anything that was readable which wow. means that this is even worse than it looks like and just to um just to clarify so i keep on saying like saturated fats monounsaturated fats polyunsaturated fats these authors say you know what all unsaturated fats are not equal. The, the less saturation or the less unsaturation, the better. So monounsaturated is actually better than polyunsaturated fats. And here are their um, ratios of, of saturated fatty acids to monounsaturated mono fatty acids to polyunsaturated fatty acids in corn oil. 62% polyunsaturated fats. In sunflower oil, 61% polyunsaturated fats, basically equivalent between corn oil and sunflower oil. In coconut oil, 91% saturated fat. Amazing. With 7% uh, monounsaturated and only 2% polyunsaturated. And butter, I'm a little confused about this and a little bit of digging, I, I couldn't figure out why the butter numbers don't add up to 100%. Uh, it's not 100%. Because it's not oh because it's protein protein yeah because there's milk thank you that's gonna that's gonna be it so I thought I thought this was a just about the fats but that's got to be it that they're that they're looking at the entire makeup of the butter so of the portion uh, yeah given that butter isn't 100 fat um, I guess I'm not gonna be able to do the math in my head but let's just say it's 50, of of the fat <laughs> no of of the entire bit of butter 52 percent is uh, is saturated fatty acids 21 percent monounsaturated fatty acids, and 3.5% polyunsaturated yeah, people fats. People can't see the 3.5%, so oh, it's important okay. to highlight that. Yeah, so that's three, yeah. That's, polyunsaturated yeah. fats, 3% 3.5% in, in butter. Yeah, so that could that could look very misleading. Um, and so you, you indeed see, like, coconut oil, I, I, I was surprised by the coconut oil to butter comparison, right? I, we, we cook with both. Um, I love butter. Uh, and I would have thought the coconut oil and butter were very similar to one another, just as corn oil and sunflower oil are with regard to their, um, their makeup of fats. And, uh, and, and no, actually coconut oil has way higher saturated fatty acid content. Um, and it generates far less cytotoxic and genotoxic lipid oxidation products when, when food is fried in it at these relatively short periods of time. So I, I know you said it, but can you describe what the two different lines are? It's a mess. Uh, so I, no, basically, if you want to give me my screen back for a second, Zach, so I can just make sure I go back to the right thing. Okay, you can read it now. Um, it's sigmoidal time dependence of mean plus or minus SEM, total saturated and alpha B 
alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde concentrations, red and blue, respectively. So, so total two different aldehydes. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. It's just it's it's just two different aldehydes, and um, you know, there's a lot of all of these classes, and I did not go into the chemistry and figure out what all the differences are yeah. and why it is that you can divide them neatly into two classes. So um, that's why I did not <laughs> I did not specify much uh, much there. Um, and that's that's basically it. Um, you know, this this paper, actually, I'll go back here. Um, what, they've got one remarkable quote in here. I got it. It should also be noted. Oh, so these are, I, I think they're going to be British authors. And so when they say chip, they mean uh, French fry. Uh, so it should also be noted that these estimated 154 gram potato French fry serving aldehyde contents. So this is in a small serving of French fries in the, in the typical oils that French fries are being fried in. 154 grams, not a large serving at all, are not dissimilar to those arising from the smoking of a daily allocation of 25 tobacco cigarettes, i.e. the alpha, beta, unsaturated, and saturated aldehydes, croton aldehyde, and N-hexanol, respectively. Wow. From less than a normal serving of like a mcdonald's french fry thing i don't know what units they come in but uh, <laughs> what do you call that <laughs> so envelope so, well i said a small serving of serving i don't know basket